This is Rob at Higher Power Performance again. I uh, just wanted to show you all the uh, solution flow when you do convection cooling with your cell below your reservoir slash primary bubbler. Um, it's really moving. Uh, I need to figure out gallons an hour, but it's moving more than my uh, five gallon per hour circulation pump for the other end of the system. Um, it'll be a stainless steel tube and shell, um, basically a four inch diameter tube, um, and then inside sealed with O-rings and plates, there's um, 25 5 16 stainless steel brake lines welded into an end plate. So the solution will pump through the tubes and then separate from that you will have 25% distilled water uh, or 75% distilled water, 25% coolant on the other side, on the outsides of those tubes drawing the heat away from your uh, KOH solution. Um, then the uh, antifreeze solution will go through a big transmission cooler uh, and it will need a pump. Uh, one to two gallons an hour should be sufficient. Just a little circulation pump. Um, you know, something about 40 bucks. And it'll go through a 28,000 GVW transmission cooler since it's just distilled water and coolant. No corrosion there. And, uh, draw the heat away from my, from my cell. And the, um, there's the Suburban, you guys can see that I blew up the rear end so I'm converting it to a uh, one ton running gear. Um, let me get this thing sealed up here. There she goes. But that's my uh, solution for cooling this system because I'm going to be trying to run it at 80 amps. I did get a 60 amp output and it's just about four liters a minute um, so I'm hoping to push that to the extreme with the 80 um, the line still got a lot of air in it but it doesn't look like there's much uh, gas coming through that water you know in, in my first part of the video but It's cranking it out. Um, pretty happy with it. Um, running at 30 amps, I've had it running for uh, eight hours, and it does eventually creep up to about 160 degrees. Um, four hours, four and a half hours, it was about 120, and it seems to hit some type of peak, and eventually heats it up, which 150, 160 isn't bad, but with the amperage that I'm going to be pushing, it's probably going to get worse. And the cell right now has um, 35,000 spacing, and I'm going to take that down to a 10 and see what happens. Um, and uh, see if we can get it a little more efficient being closer together. I don't know. Um, that works decent with uh, actually the shim cell stock that I have in here. Um, it's got 300 square inches of surface area, but it's only a positive and negative, so it boils the water quite fast. That's not the way to go for sure. Um, dry cells are promising. Um, the one that I've built, I use a polycarbonate end plate, and it keeps cracking on me every time I shut the cell down and it cools. Um, acrylic may be better, I don't know. If you can see that, I mean, it just cracks. And it, I had the cell running for three days and it never cracked. It doesn't crack until I shut it off and it cools down. Um, I mean, there's only four bolts going through it right now because I've rebuilt this thing about four times and same result. I keep breaking the polycarbonate, so it's a little too brittle. Um, but, anyways, any thoughts, comments? That'd be great. Have a nice day.